Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be showing you how to take headlights like this with this serious etching and scratching embedded into the headlight and turn them into something like this. Damn. The future of headlight restoration. Headlight restoration out of this world. Stay tuned. Understand. Let's get down to business. This is a 2006 Lexus LS430. Uh, as you see here, there is uh, severe etching. It's almost rough like a sandpaper and scratching, especially in this area over here. Um, but it's all over this bottom half primarily. And this just comes from pretty much the design of the headlight, which is very big and also um, years of car washing and oxidation and getting beat up by the sun and when I say etching it, I exactly mean what I say um, etching is pretty much if you don't know it's like uh, if you take a little chisel and you you know tap it a bunch you know amongst something or on something or if you take a pan or something and you scrape and you scratch and all that stuff uh, and it you know leaves severe damage inside of the material that you do it to so that's what's going on with this but let me show you this this isn't for sale or anything but just giving you guys a little pro tip uh, this is what I use um, it's just an apron uh, you know you can get one embed it with your uh, company's insignia or you know whatever on there put whatever you want on one uh, this one is a dark Vader or Darth Vader excuse me I call him dark Vader <laughs> A lot of people do um, but anyhow uh, that's what I use to keep myself clean during the day uh, or cleaner shall I say because you know once you get into doing three or four or five headlights you get a shitload of dirt all over and you're outside all day you don't know the weather conditions so I try to keep my um, clothing kind of uh, clean or clean as possible just to um, you know cut back on some of the washing or whatnot just because you know of course over time a lot of washing a lot of washing especially during the summer because you're sweating and stuff it messes up the material of your clothes and your prints and all that stuff so I just like to you know stay clean so anyways uh, it's a good idea to use an apron it keeps all that stuff off you in the front this is a very big light this fucking light is huge if you can see it and you see the size of the drill this light on average is about the size of two medium sized lights and it is on the size of the upper large uh, end of headlights it is large for a big light okay um, with that being said um, you know like I said and the uh, precursors and as this video um, states is pretty much the future of headlight restoration what is it the future of headlight restoration is not just turning headlights clear okay it's not um, if you take if you take that standpoint turning headlights clear what is going to be the best for the future of headlight restoration what is going to be the best what is people going to want what are they going to want and sought after they're going to want the best of the best right they're going to want the clearest most wettest most functioning headlights they can possibly get okay from a fucked up standpoint from a degraded standpoint okay they're not only going to want that they're going to want the best longevity far as uh, headlight health okay and people say oh longevity they want it to last forever don't they don't give a shit if it explodes or turns purple or cracks up no if you ask me and people and that's that when it, that's when it comes in that it's your chore to educate these people because they're gonna have people out there promising lifetime guarantee and all this and this and that because they're putting furniture varnish on the shit it doesn't turn yellow it's a it's a fool's uh, gold type of thing and it's a fool's headlight restoration it's just either somebody fooling somebody into getting a headlight restoration or somebody who fooled themselves and don't really know what's going on doesn't have the education of 
uh, headlight restoration to actually know that there is no permanent headlight restoration. Uh, there is no things that last this long and blah, 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 blah. And those things that tend to last too long, well, you know, there isn't too long, okay? You want something that tells you, hey, my headlights are going bad. Hey, my coating is going bad. I need to get it replaced. Why? Because you can have a vehicle like this, a 2006, where this guy's had it since the beginning of, you know, he was a first owner. You know, uh, of course, I talk to my customers and I'm really, um, I'm a really, I'm a real good people person. Okay, I don't just come there to work. I come there to, you know, to shine, and I come there to let you know I'm a good dude as well as I'm going to be handling your vehicle. So, anyways, uh, he's a first-time owner of this vehicle, the only owner of this vehicle. So he's had this since about 2006, if not 2005, because vehicles come out a little early sometimes. So um, that's damn near like 20 years ago. Okay. So it's, 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 you know, it, these cars can last so long and he's never had the headlight restored before. So they've been gone and they've been messed up for plenty of years now. But just imagine if he had the headlights restored five years ago and somebody put the wrong shit on them and did the wrong method or whatever. And, you know, they just started fucking up. They started cracking instead of the surface, instead of the clear coat going bad. Okay, when you're doing a headlight restoration in terms of going bad, you want it to have indicators and you want it to go bad when it's time to go bad to show you the clear coat's going bad. Because if you don't show the clear coat's going bad, that's a lot um, a lot to do with when lights start going bad, fucked up. You start getting the cracking, the spider cracking, the overheating, the burn marks, all that shit from the inside. It's just weird shit, and people are putting weird shit on headlights. But with that being said, um, they want the best-looking headlights, okay? The future of headlight restoration is people want the best-looking headlights and the healthiest-looking headlights, you know, in terms of longevity, Okay. Um, so with that being said, I believe methods like this and this method primarily is the future of headlight restoration. Okay, because why? Nothing is healthier for a headlight like this. This is scientifically proven, um, you know, a headlight method. Okay, with all these things that I tell you guys about, um, you know, filling those pockets, those microscopic, po microscopic pockets with the uh, beneficial oils and things like that make it a healthy um, thing. It's a very scientific method, um, you know, and it uses the best uh, of everything, okay? Not only that, let's just get down to the meat and potatoes. There is no method that can produce a headlight that looks as good as these. Now, I have eyes, I have common sense. You guys have eyes, hopefully you guys have, um, you know, somewhat common sense. And if you're watching this video, something's caught your attention. If you subscribe to this channel, something has caught your attention. And more than likely, it is the way my finished product looks. It looks second to none. It is the best looking. I feel the only person that can produce a better looking headlight than me or as good as headlight as me is somebody who is using my method. Point blank. Okay, who's using this exact method and has, has got their skills up and is good enough and have learned and have been educated and know what's going on and has enough skill and time can match this method, but I don't think they can improve it or make it better looking. Okay, because I mean, I always say that, like I used to say that a lot, like how's it going to look better? Is it going to like turn into water? Is it going to like, you're going to be able to walk through it? I mean, you should really see and, and, and just, just, you know, and it's not to my own horn, it's just being a realist. It's being logical okay you know like that motherfucker on star trek spot okay he doesn't he doesn't feel emotions he doesn't this and that and that's how men are that's how i am okay i i do logic i do numbers i do statistics i do all that shit i don't get caught up in my emotions or my passions i'm just saying point blank one plus one is two straight up nothing looks as good so that is the future of headlight restoration. Headlight restoration is a very visual, um, it's a very visual thing, okay? I detail and I do scratch removal and I do all these things. I do ceramic wax, I do, uh, you know, waxing, I do, you know, ceramics, I do all kind of stuff, right? I do, um, you know, engine bay cleaning and detailing, I do this, that. It is so hard to sell or so hard to get the point across visually humans uh, have eyes and ears and all that stuff the biggest thing that sells to a human being or to a being with eyes 
is the visual aspect, okay? Headlight restoration is so extremely visible. All you have to show somebody, here's before and here's after. And then they see, here's my headlights that looked before, and here's what my headlights looked after in person. Okay, so it sells itself, okay? And, um, you know, I, you know, with all the other things that I do, it's hard to show a person a picture of this before and after, which you can do if you're good enough, uh, but it's, it's not as plain as cut as uh, working on this clear, transparent, um, you know, structure, okay? When people see the before and after, it's just a wow factor, all right? And the thing wow. is, with this wow. method, you're going to have the biggest wow factor. And a lot of people think, like, oh, he's tuning his own horn, this and that. No, I'm a realist, and I'm telling you, I'm putting it out there right there every single step, every single minute, you know, second per second, whatever, you're, you're, you're viewing it on this channel over a hundred times. If you include all of my profiles or um, my portfolios, uh, there's over 300 and something examples of a perfect headlight restoration. And this is just a couple uh, here and there. I might record one or two a week. You know what I'm saying? I'm not recording every single one I do. Okay? I'm not pulling my punches like I'll put this one there, put that one there within, um, within respect of, uh, oh, I've done, another, here's another matrix. I'm not going to take hey, two, two more matrix here. I don't want to film this and have 16 matrix vehicles on my page. Within reason of that, I don't film certain vehicles. I'm far too busy every week and every day pretty much to film every single vehicle that I do. But this is the future of headlight restoration, this method, and methods that are similar to this method, okay? Um, you know, far as functionality, okay? Okay, people, like I said, people are visual. They want to come out and look at it. That's why a lot of people sell their headlights anyways, because their headlight restoration isn't that good. They doesn't perform that good, Okay, but it looks makes their car not look all beat up because they have fucked up headlights. Okay, so that's how most people sell. But anyhow, um, visually, when they come out and look at it or they see the before and afters, they're like, that is the shit. Okay, this is going to get wow. you chosen to do their headlight restorations over many others. Once it gets, uh, you know, once the competition gets more stiffer, when you're using this method, they're going to choose you before anybody else because yours is going to look 10 times better than anybody else's. There's guys that internet use 2K clear. They use wipes. They use all these fucking things. If they were in my neighborhood doing headlight restoration, they would have to sell it for free damn near to compete with me. Okay? So I'm just saying, you can inflict that kind of punishment on them wherever you're at, too, if you use this method. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not being conceited, this and that. I'm just giving you the facts. Okay? That's what I'm here. I'm a realist. And I'm telling you, you can view all my things, take all your notes, view all the little things and tidbits I give you, and be this good sooner or later. Or be, you know, close enough as this good, okay? You got to keep in mind, I have, you know, probably thousands of headlights at this point. As I say, I stopped counting a long time ago. It was a little fun thing in the beginning, but then it just takes up too much uh, mental space to be keeping track of this shit and writing it down and all that stuff. So, um... You know, it's not to my own horn. It's showing you how amazing this process is, how uh, marketable and how beneficial it is for the headlights. It's uh, very healthy, and it's going to make your... And, and, and the number one thing, like I said, um, besides the visual, you know, whatever, it's a safety thing. When you use these, people text me, and they're like, hey... Oh my God, I can't believe it. The next day they're texting me, I drove last night and, and it was insane. This car has never worked this way. The light threw so far and it went so wide. I could just like lift the whole street like I had LEDs or something. I have regular lights. And I'm like, yeah, that's what it's going to do. That optical uh, transparency and it's, 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 you know, optical transparent product, okay? When you're dealing with a headlight coating, one, okay. Let me back that up. When you're dealing with the headlight coating that is from a major company that has gone through major tests that is not just worried about, hey, I'm putting this stuff on a light to make it clear, okay? Because a lot of shit you put on a light to make it clear will fuck your function up. It'll have your light uh, refracting, scattering everywhere, and being blocked in a sense, okay? Believe it or not, not everything clear works on headlights as far as headlight function. You can look at it and be like, oh, yeah, that's way more clear. But you probably have less headlight coming out of it than you did when the headlight was fucked up. 
right? So these major companies that have millions of dollars and scientists and all that stuff uh, that are making real headlight products, because now we're getting to the point of the headlight um, and in the future, you're going to have these Joe Schmoes in the garage mixing up uh, different shit they get from a paint company or some some Joe Schmo who's buying uh, an unknown clear coat that he knows nothing about from some company in New York or Wisconsin or some fucking where that he's not at and they don't know nothing about it and don't know what it is that people are going to spring on their headlights and he doesn't care because when it comes time when people start bitching and planning two years later he's going to be nowhere to be found his business is not going to be in operation and a lot of people operate like this okay they don't look for the future they look for the quick come up or they're just not intelligent enough to know that this might not be a good product to put on a headlight who made this product right or you know i don't care make it it makes it clear that's all that matters i don't care what the headlight pro says yeah you don't fucking understand you don't know but anyhow not everything can be used in headlights you have to have an optically clear grade which means light is meant to pass through the substance okay because uh, most clear substance that you buy in a can is not that it's going to hit it and it's going to block it and it's going to refract it and it's going to be all weird right you're not going to get the light out. Um, but these big major companies that are making whatever it is for headlights, if it's a towelette, if it's a spray, if it's whatever, if it comes from, um, you know, Meguiar's, if it comes from 3M, if it comes from, you know, a, a name brand company, more than likely you are going to be safe as far as optical transparency means your light is, your lights are going to pass through it's going to enhance or or keep the light structure that you have as far as passing through the headlight which is very important all right now uh you know um i like to think and you know a lot of people like to think and um you know that my headlight restorations are out of this world Okay, <laughs> every time I do a headlight restoration, even this gentleman, when the people come out, I'm going to start recording it too. And I think it should be okay as long as it's just not like a, there's no telltale signs that nobody's going to know who voice this is or whatever, right? But um, I'm going to start recording the reactions, right? And it's, 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 it's insane. They have this, they have such a crazy, um, reaction when they come out and they see these headlights done and in, in, in the in the beginning when I did them uh, and I used different methods they were like oh, okay yeah it's a lot better I like that you know and then once my method evolved into this okay my method had to evolve into this going through a bunch of other shit um, you know they come out and they're like oh my god that shit I can't believe this you must have replaced these headlights and, you know, they've never looked like this and, oh my God, they're, you know, this and that. And the reactions are priceless. Like I said, last year I had two women that came out and started crying and like gave me a hug and like I hugged them back and was like, I can't believe this. They're like really physically crying. <laughs> but, um, uh, anyhow, uh, my headlight restoration method had to evolve into this and I knew I had what I had um, you know I had gold or I hit struck oil or whatever you want to call it at my finishing point or my finishing step of mastery when this didn't stop evolving okay little things started evolving like the hand sand step and the little wet sanding on the corners of messed up crazy lights and you know uh certain little tiny things evolved but the entire little process evolved very little once i hit this point and what I'm talking about is like, I started with like most every other person watching different video people on there that weren't headlight restoration pros. They were not pros. They were just uh, car mechanic videos on YouTube and, and uh, you know, how-to videos that, you know, some guy might show you how to clean a fish tank and then how to do a headlight and how to, you know, scratch your ass or some shit, right? But I learned from these people and they were putting, oh, Krylon, you know, um, you know, Krylon on your headlights and... And acrylic on headlights and using wipes and using this product and 2k clear spray max and all these things like that and, and other spray max and different 2k clears made for other than furniture and then 2k clears from I tried all of them and this is and when I say try I mean like I tried in working progress on vehicles paid customer vehicles 
way in the beginning. And then I tried, um, you know, when I was going to the uh, wrecking yards, getting headlights, I tried them on those things and I evolved my technique. I did hand sandings. Uh, I started with hand sand, wet sand. And I was just like, there's got to be a better way. This shit sucks ass. So I started trying other things. I've dry hand sand, tried machines, this and that. I used to, um, you know, have a low, like a 400 RPM uh, machine I started with at first, you know, a, a, a hand drill. And then, you know, I would do the polishing step with that as well. And I was like, something's wrong. I'm missing something. And that's how my brain works. I'm like a real uh, evolution type. I think it's called evolutory person or evolutionized person. I don't know. Uh, I evolve, okay? Okay, my mind evolves and I find something and then I dig at it until I fix it until it becomes a hundred percent correct right so that's what happened with this and I've been rocking with this for so long and I still try new things let me try this I saw this on the internet let me try this because I think this might improve it and then it ends up not so I'm like shit okay keep it where it is I, like every month I try something new every other month I try something new but here's the other light right here uh, it's coming up here in a minute uh, but uh, I still try new things. I still try new things. I still try new techniques. And nothing takes the case of or takes the cake of this method. And the thing is, you guys can do it too because I've been showing you this. And like, no, you know, I show you 100% of this and I show you no lies, no bullshit. I show you exactly what I do, exactly what I'm using, and how it's done. You should be able to reproduce this. Let me look at this. Look at this headlight, it's out of this world. This headlight restoration method is out of this world. Okay, it is the future of headlight restoration. And you guys should get on it because ain't nothing going to trump this, ain't nothing gonna look better than this. I say it's the toilet paper effect, right? I always say that. You could spend a billion dollars to have a robot come out the wall and wipe your ass, but toilet paper will always be the best method worldwide to wipe your ass. Thanks for watching and subscribe.